there was an inciting incident. I was on the phone with someone I used to work directly for. We hadn't talked for a long time. We, you know, we did our updates on family. Then I asked him about his career and I could hear the disappointment in his voice when he talked mm -hmm. about his career and he hadn't achieved the level uh, of accomplishments that I think he probably thought he would. And certainly that I thought he would, cause he's very talented. We hung up the phone and I literally got a sticky note from right next to me. And I put on my wall, what impedes the progress of talented people? I wrote that and I looked at it for about, you know, two, three weeks. And then I went to the Dean at Kellogg and said, can I do some research on this? I'm curious about this topic. When you see these talented people and we see them all the time, you know, we, we invest in early stage startups, you'll see these people hit walls and you, why are they hitting a wall when they're competent? You know, they're, they're intelligent. What's going on? So I dug into the topic. There's a lot of research on this because of all the 360 interviews that people do, you know, 360 surveys. What do the people that are at the top of an organization do differently that are the high pose, high potentials? What do they do differently than people that are in the bottom quartile? And you can tease out what competencies strong people have and, and what competencies people that aren't as strong in terms of performance, what they lack. Then I ended up talking to 50 some people who had either been fired or demoted. And I found these themes, these very clear themes. And the, the, the biggest theme is a lack of self-awareness, not surprisingly, a mm -hmm. lack of self-awareness around a blind spot, a skill gap, or an attitudinal trait that was holding somebody back because they either wouldn't face it, it was too painful, or they were blissfully ignorant of it. And so that was the key theme. It's like the, the headline of the book is, what you don't know can hurt you. Well, the number one reason I found for people that run into trouble and, and derail, either they get fired or they get demoted or they flatline, they're told they're not promotable. The number one reason is not surprisingly interpersonal issues. And so I created these archetypes, these characterizations to sort of lighten up this topic. So one of the characterizations I have is this Captain Fantastic character who's, you know, big and bold and, and I, me, mine and presses for the advantage and is, you know, bruising people as he, in his quest for the corner office. And he does well early in his career because he self-advocates very effectively. But later on, when the job gets nuanced and, he, and this person needs to rely cross-functionally on other people, they need to work through other people. Other people are not there for this person because he's bombastic. He's self-serving. He's not empathetic. He lacks compassion and he ends up derailing. And that is the number one reason. So I, as I wrote this, I would get letters and emails from people who would say, Hey, I'm, I was captain fantastic. And I felt the lash of, of, of being captain fantastic. And then I would contact them back and I'd say, well, what have you learned or what happened? And what's interesting is 80 some percent of the time, if somebody owns their derailment trait, I have been lacked empathy. I have been, I've been pressing to my advantage and not listening and not really trying to help cross-functional teams get their work done. When people own it, 80 some percent of the time, they end up, you know, alleviating or mitigating that trait and getting back on track. So it was so nice to hear from people who said, I have that. You know, what should I do about it? Or I have that. I want to get past it. And I would say you will get past it if you want to. But the first one, the first thing is you got to own it. One of the biggest derailment reasons, and I think this is on the rise today, given all the devices and all the technological changes we're going through. It, it's an archetype I call version 1.0. People mm -hmm. that are stuck, they're using, you know, they're not embracing new technologies. They're not, you know, they're not current. And as a result of that, they're falling behind. You know, how do you use generative AI to your advantage? Machine learning, big data sets. How are you thinking about these seismic shifts? Are you in front of them? Do you have uh, advisors around you that can counsel you on the best uses of, of, of some of these change technologies? And when people deny that and say, you know, I know how to sell 
sells a contact sport. You know, I don't need to understand these fancy software lead generation tools. Well, actually, these tools could help you be even better in selling. So mm -hmm. that is one that I'm really on the lookout for this, this like, are you a learner and are you adapting to changing environment, especially with all these new technologies that are coming? Another reason for derailment that has happened more lately is this per this person that doesn't deliver on promises. They they say yes to too many things. They get overextended. They don't have good prioritization methods. They don't have a, a good way of moving through their tasks. They don't have organizing procedures for their day. And they end up dropping balls as they're juggling and juggling. And people end up pulling away from this person because their word is not their bond. And at the root of this one, I found it is either people that don't have a good system to organize their day and their work, they don't prioritize well, or they have trouble saying no. So there is, you know, book books and methods to actually learn to say no with tact, you know, with compassion, really, really important because you know, in this day and age where this device is just interrupting us all the time, mm -hmm. we have to know how to block our day, spend our time on our important initiatives and not get distracted by everything that comes along. The number one reason self-reported that people derail is they say they get distracted and can't get their work done, which I think is this, this, this inability to deliver because of letting outside distractions get in your way.